I'm spinning in a vicious cycle I'm scared of doing something I'll regret Maybe this is right, but I'm still staring at your silhouette Hi, so you probably already know that recently Steinberg Spectral Layers 10 has been released And one of the features of that spectral editor is that it can unmix a song for you So that you're left with stems from just a stereo track now you've probably already seen many videos of spectral layers that demonstrate that, but in this video I'm going to compare the spectral layer stems to the real stems of a song. So let's go! Now the song that I'm going to use for this test is from a service called Streambeats, which provides copyright free music for Twitch streamers and YouTubers. So for me, and the best thing about it is that it's completely free. And as you can see over here, they have lots of different music styles. And the way I understand their business model is that they allow you to stream their music for free via the streaming services. When you're, for example, streaming or making YouTube videos. And obviously they then get the money for that from Spotify, Apple Music, etc. However, and that's how I'm going to use the track now, they also allow you to download the tracks. They provide a legal document stating that you're allowed to use the music. And if anything goes wrong with copyright, if you use their music in a YouTube video, for example, then they provide a form that you can fill out. And the way I understand it is that they will then settle the copyright claim with YouTube so that you don't get into trouble as a content creator. So pretty great service, clever business model, and I'll provide a link to Streambeats in the description below. Now back to the song that I'm going to use for this test. It is called What If, and I guess it's kind of a pop rock track. So let's have a listen. Yeah, so a full on pop rock track. And the nice thing about this track is that they've also provided the stems for the track, which I have also imported into Cubase. For example, these are the vocals. I'm spinning in a vicious cycle. Guitars. Piano. Bass. And drums. Now, as it happens, these are also exactly the kind of stems that spectral layers can unmix a song to. So it provides some very nice material to compare to. What I have noticed though, is that the stems don't exactly sum to the final mix, which was in the first track that you heard. Let me show you. If for example, on this track, which is a stereo mix, I invert the face and then play it together with the real stems, you would expect it to null, but that's not happening exactly. So there's definitely some difference there. I think most of what we're still hearing here is differences in the ambience, in the reverb. And it kind of figures that when you're exporting a stem versus a full mix, that what you feed into the reverbs or into the mix bus processing is slightly different and can cause the stems to not sum exactly to what you get on the full mix. Or maybe the stereo mix was mastered and the stems weren't. Or maybe the stems were mastered separately, bringing up the ambience more than in the stereo mix. Who knows? But I think the stereo mix that we're going to feed into spectral layers sounds very, very close to the stems when they're all playing together. Let me demonstrate that. Yeah, so it's not exactly the same, but it's close enough. So let's now unmix this song in spectral layers. And in this case, I have opened spectral layers as an application, so not as an ARA extension in Cubase. And I can import the song by dragging it into spectral layers. And I can now go to unmix song. So I want to mix all stems, vocals, guitars, bass, drums, piano, and other. I want the best quality and let's go. 
Now in real time this took about 40-50 seconds but I've sped it up for you so you don't have to wait for that. But we are now met with all the layers of this song in spectral layers. For example, let's listen. And if I make the spectral layers window a bit shorter now, I can now just drag and drop these layers into Cubase so that we can compare them to the real stems. And this is what it looks like after importing all the layers into Cubase. I made a separate group track, summing all the layers from spectral layers. We have vocals, guitar, piano, bass, drums. And we have other, those are the instruments that spectral layers could not assign to any of these instruments. And we have non-unmixed, basically the remainder, after separating out all the other stems. So let's have a listen to the real mix versus the sum of all the spectral layers. layers. Starting with the real mix and then going to the sum of all the layers. And if you now think you heard a difference there, I can only say that you're wrong because Spectral Layers does a perfect job at this, which I can also demonstrate again with a null test. If I flip the face of the main mix and let it play together with all the layers from Spectral Layers summed together, you would hear the difference if there is any. And as you can hear, perfect silence. So when listening to all the layers from Spectral Layers together, they are exactly the same as the main mix. But what I want to listen to, of course, is the differences when you listen to the individual stems. Because I don't know what you're expecting, but I'm sure they cannot be exactly the same. Because when you put all those stems together, you get frequencies masking each other. So I think even theoretically, it's probably not even possible to separate out these stems perfectly. At least not as perfect as when you export the stems separately from the mix. Now at this point, if you appreciate this video, you can really help me out by giving it a big like on YouTube, subscribing to the channel, and ringing the little bell icon if you want to get notified when I post another video. If you think the video is absolutely fabulous, you can use the super thanks button below, or if you intend to buy anything at these stores, you can do it via the affiliate links in the description, in which case I will get a small commission of whatever you buy at these stores without any extra cost to you. Let's get back to the video. So let's start with the male vocal in the first verse and compare it to the vocal stem of Spectral Layers. If I become a little too shy for love I've been hurt before All's fair in love and war so Let's try the female vocal in the second verse Should I be scared? The feeling's so different now You got me floating here A feather in the air Oh but when the wind blows, will I tumble or sail away? Or would you have me say? And what if I... Well, I don't know how you feel about it, but I think this is very, very good. Obviously, you hear a difference. You hear some artifacts on the layer from Spectral Layers. And you hear less ambience, less reverb. Probably because that tail, once it goes down in level, it is masked more and more by other things that are happening in the track. But to me, it's remarkable what I'm hearing. And this also works in parts of the song where they're singing together. What if you're everything I need? A fire in my heart, the air I breathe. What if I'm incomplete without you by my side? And what if I go against my heart? Instead of confessing from the start. What if I miss out on the life meant for us? I need... Yeah, so the vocal stack of the real stem is of course much more impressive. I think you can also hear many more vocals, but still the main vocals are there in the spectral layer stem as well. Let's move on to the guitars. Now there's this simple guitar figure in the beginning. Now there seems to be more missing from the guitar layer here, but maybe it's in the other or unmixed layer. Let's have a listen. Yeah, maybe some of that ambience is in the other layer, so let's combine these two. Yeah, 
Yeah, still not exactly the same, but more similar. Let's listen to the more heavy guitar part in the chorus. Yeah, I think there as well, I think some guitars are ending up in the unmixed layer, meaning that spectral layers didn't quite identify them as guitar sounds. Let's listen to the piano. And you can already see from the waveform in the track here that the piano is probably quite low in the mix. And that results over here, if you look at the waveform in the spectral layer stem, that there's whole parts in here where spectral layers does not hear the piano. Let's first pick a part where the piano is clearly audible for spectral layers as well, like this part over here, for example. Same part for the real stem. Let's see if something there got moved to the unmixed layer as well. Not really, I think the piano is probably just too low in level in the mix to be properly identified by spectral layers in all places. You do get some of the basic sound, but a lot of it is missing as well. Let's move on to bass guitar. Looks like the bass guitar is starting over here. Well, I think the separation is quite good in the spectral layer stem. You don't hear a lot of the other instruments, but as for frequency range of the bass, it's really missing the high end part of the bass when compared to the stem. Now, typically the low end of a mix is reserved for the bass guitar and the kick. So it figures that spectral layers can more easily hear the low end of a bass guitar compared to the high end of a bass guitar, which is masked by all the other elements in the mix. Finally, let's have a listen to the drum stems. Now, a bit similar to the bass guitar, the separation is quite good. Spectral layers has really managed to zoom in on the drums, but the full frequency range, as you can hear it in the real stem, is not there in the stem from spectral layers. But again, I'm not really surprised by that. I am more surprised by how much real drums you're hearing in the spectral layer stem and none of the other instruments. So now that you've listened to these comparisons, what do you think? What is your opinion? How do you feel the spectral layer stems compare to the real stems? And how do you think the spectral layer stems can be used? Now, to me, this whole technology of splitting stems from just a stereo file is still remarkable. When you compare it to some other software which does similar things, for example, there's a website, Lala AI, you have RipX, you have Isotope RX, and then when you compare the stems, there are some smaller, some larger differences. I think Spectral Layers does as good of a job as you can expect with most of these stems, and I've seen a lot of comparisons, and I've done some comparisons myself as well. So to me, what could be the use of these spectral layer stems? Well, for one thing, rebalancing. As you see, they perfectly sum when you play them all together. And if you want the vocal to be a little bit louder or the drums to be a little bit louder or whatever element, then you can definitely turn up a stem or turn another stem down without almost any artifacts. Another thing that works really well with these spectral layer stems is if you want to add a certain effect to one of the stems, for example, some extra reverb on the vocal, maybe some delay, if that happens in a full dense mix, again, you will almost not hear any artifacts, if at all. Now, as a musician, I think these stems are really great for learning parts. So if you play one of these instruments, it makes a lot of sense to just listen to the stem of that instrument so that you can get more details than when listening to the full mix. Now, as a music producer, I think you can learn a lot from these stems, because again, in the stems, you hear small parts, which you may not have noticed in the full mix and or little arrangement tricks of these parts. Sound-wise, the stems that Spectral Layers produces don't really match the real stems, but the main character of the sound is usually there. So as a producer, you can pick up something from that as well. 
Now, spectral layers can also further split up the stem of the drums in that it can produce a kick track, a snare track and a cymbal track, for example. And I've already done a separate video on that in which I separate out the stems from a stereo drum loop with spectral layers and I compare it to using Sonable Smart Gate, which is also able to separate out the various drums from just a stereo drum loop. If you're interested in that, check it out over here. Enjoy and see you soon.